All right. I trust that all of you, Norm over here, he has his. I trust all of you have your tools and you have some gloves and maybe a mask so that we can go along with the neural improvement. <laughs> Remember, Norm says, if he can do it, you can do it. So. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned to this, this PBS station for another episode of This Old Brain. <laughs> Maybe that's not a joke. Maybe we should just fish on with that. There is this somewhat interesting operation that some of you in TV land may not know about. I shouldn't go into it. But it has to do with uh, if you have severe migraines and certain, what do they call them, uh, psychological problems. There's a thing you can do with a Phillips screwdriver and a small ball peen hammer. But well, you better write in for the, our, our, our real little booklet about that rather than just try it. Could we hit a bit more of what we were talking about earlier around the area of how man's secondary intellectual life is based upon these factual versions that at any given moment, any given time, what you have is one idea dominating another idea, dominating it, and such situations normally go by such terms, quite proper, quite historically based and way into the future, as far as you can see, they're going to prevail, but one idea is dominating over another one, and this is called, such ideas, as the truth over error, or the truth versus error. This is functional, as we've talked about, and there's nothing, no complaint, and this is not to put any kind of specious or even spurious bad rap on logic and reason in the ordinary world, but that which is called the truth is always at the expense of something else. You've got no other choice, not because of psychology, not because of rhetoric, not because of reason, but because of polarized energy being the basic operational mechanics and flow in a three-dimensional world. And so at any given time, if in the secondary world, and it has its absolute parallel, it's just as obvious, so obvious, that I'm not even going to bore you with it, in the primary world, at the animal level, so to speak, in man and in non-man, you know, such as beavers and accountants and orthodontists. <laughs> that has an absolute, absolute, inescapable, unquestionable, it's not just a parallel, it's actually the basis for it, if you want to look at it in that kind of spooky, literal manner, that if it's a matter of eat or not eat, which in the matter of food, a primary matter, it's always that. And if you do not make the right choice, you know what will happen. You know that. You'll be in that great rock and roll heaven with Karen Carpenter and all your other favorites. You've got to make the right choice. And it's foolish at that level, if you're going to talk about it, to say it's good to eat. Eating, when you need to eat, is the truth. I mean, there's nothing to say. It's just ridiculous. But there is an absolute parallel that's not looked at in this manner when you go into the secondary world, the intellectual world. And here it is called, it's got to be called something, or you wouldn't be talking about the secondary world. And there's nothing wrong with the word truth, there's nothing wrong with the word proper, there's nothing wrong with the word good, and there's nothing bad or good about the words evil, error, improper, false. But it's not simply a matter, some transcendental, some metaphysical, some spiritual, and it's not even scientific matter of the truth has got to overcome error. Or the truth, when it does prevail, is prevailing over error. Or propriety, goodness, decency, civility, when it is prevailing, when it is properly in the upper position, then impropriety, barbarous behavior, is being subdued, is being overcome. All of that is just a form of civilized palaver from a certain view because a more truthful telling of it has nothing to do with any shades of propriety, morality, even scientific validity. 
it is simply this. Not that those have no place. Not that they're wrong. But if you're ever going to see what's going on, if there's any chance, you've got to see that it doesn't matter what it was called. Instead of truth and error, if you look at that, if you were more of a scientific bent, and you call it truth or error, or if you're more religiously bent, and you, and you think about it as being, as being goodness and evil, which is another version, rather than worrying about that, you've got to look at it this way. If it wasn't called truth and error, it could be called uh, chocolate and vanilla. And if it wasn't called good and evil, it could be called 10-speed or an all-terrain bike. It wouldn't matter. The point is one, that is one form, one observable, one usable, one describable form. A polarized energy in a 3D world is dominating at any particular time its apparent opposite. Or else nothing is going on. Nothing is going on. Nothing is going on. So for something to go on, which I think most people who are alive are generally in favor, if we could see hands, of <laughs> things going on. <laughs> because if things quit going on, it sort of stands to reason, in case you can't figure it right quick, that you quit going on. So, Or vice versa for those of you who still like the vice versa approach. So it's not a matter at a more basic, at a more radical level, which is actually a more, of course, complex level. It's not a matter of the quality being judged of the validity, the truthfulness, the propriety, the goodness of any idea over another. It is simply that some idea has got to prevail. And I had refrained and I'm sure that you all appreciate it up until now of getting real childish with this, but uh, this is at the heart. This is the real core of all these so-called historical arguments about why does, if there's a God, if there's any justice in the universe, you know, how can other things go on? How can evil, if somebody, if everybody here in our society, if everybody in our part, if our city on this planet, everybody says, all right, such and such behavior is evil, and it's going on now, or it went on historically. Let's just say we say, all right, it does. I, don't want, I wouldn't want to have been a part of that. I don't want to be a part of it. So, all right, you don't call it evil, let's call it evil. But notice, something had to prevail, or nothing would have happened. And so it's not a matter of, well, wait, sometimes evil prevails and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes people call it evil and sometimes people don't. The point is, one of the ideas... The same way as behavior does at the primary level, one idea has got to be dominating its apparent opposite, or there is no idea extant. There is no idea viably extant. So, and that tied to, we're also pointing out that on that basis, you can prove anything. Life can make the human mind at any particular juncture prove anything because it doesn't matter one side or the other is going to dominate and so it can be proven all right now let's pick up what we were trying last time a couple of the car routes that were recent and one of them said that if you have to define something you do not understand it which we've talked in some areas like this before but there is a there is another rat hole real close to the corner. And it's this, that if you must intellectually depend on a polar-based explanation, polar-based facts, which you've got to, but if you, if you're just an ordinary intellect, and you must base your intellectual understanding, your intellectual attempt to understand things on a polar-based explanation as to whether any particular idea that you're trying to understand, theory, idea, system, if you're trying to study it, think about it, on a polar based, that is, it's either true or false. It's either proper or improper. It's either, and you could of course have a myriad of other more individual qualifications here if you were a ordinary Catholic, you might say, well, is this a good thing to do from a Catholic view or not? The point is, if, if what you're attempting to do, if your intellect in its attempt to perceive, to think, is based upon polar-based perceptions, wherein the question is always, is this true or false or good or bad, which covers it all, then the point is, no matter which of the two possible answers you might, quote, accept, no matter, no matter, no matter. 
Which one that you may accept, you are still not going to understand what's actually going on within the 3D mental image, which we surely don't have to play a lot of kindergarten. We're back to what's been classically referred to as a great philosophical questions, but it's all kinds of questions that even guys standing around after the basketball game might talk about in their own way. Of trying to figure out not just great philosophical questions, but trying to figure out why my wife can treat me this way, why my children can treat me this way, why the local alderman, after I contributed money, why life does not seem to go in an equitable, in a just, in a reasonable fashion. If you must define something, you cannot understand it. And at the ordinary level, as always, this is not a knock on the rock. No. It's 30 years behind. It's not a knock on the intellect. Because that is the way it must operate. But if you are dependent intellectually on a polar-based explanation of whether something is true or false, right or wrong, good or evil, proper or improper, then it does not matter which explanation you apparently accept. If you think about it anymore, most people just accept it as the basis of all the appearance of conclusions in life. That normally people, they don't go around going crazy. Ordinary people don't. It's only people like you. Ordinary people, if somebody said, boy, you know, my wife just ran off, not just ran off and left me, ran off with that guy that works down at that Amico station down the street, and he owed me money on top of that. How can you explain that? And this other guy says, well, you know, that's life. He goes, yeah, you're right. Give us another beer. <laughs> so, you know, people do not, in a secondary intellectual manner, drive themselves nuts, necessarily, in this manner. But if they did stop, or if you stopped them, and they would respond for a moment, and you said, wait a minute, you seem to have accepted that. You know, the guy just said, well, that's life. You know. Que sera, que sera. You said... Does that actually mean anything to you? And if you could stop somebody and they would try and respond in the kind of manner in which we're talking now, they would say, let me speak for them, they'd say, well, no. If I said, does that actually explain anything? Well, no, it doesn't. And they might even say, well, what do you want from me? You know, people do things. I, you know, sometimes I do nutty things. I don't know why she did it. and I don't, you know, I'm going to drive myself nuts worrying about it. It is simply this. There is no satisfactory conclusion is what Kairut meant in the one that you cannot understand anything if you still have to define it. It's not that there's anything wrong with words. There's not anything wrong with trying to understand. There's nothing wrong with defining, or we wouldn't be staying here talking unless we had some general consensus over huh, the def definitions of the words that we're using. But insofar as it leading to something that is, if you're indeed pushing the limits of the operations of the mind, if you're pushing it, then you know by now. That's what I, my little joke about People do not drive themselves crazy over the fact that life, through their intellectual perception, never comes to a satisfactory conclusion. They don't drive themselves crazy only people like you do. The joke being that if you begin to think at all, you do realize there is no such thing, which many people have. They come to the conclusion there is no such thing normally available in life as a satisfactory conclusion. But what little that seeps out into the general institutional history of man comes out is smart aleckism, <laughs> social criticism. You know, just smart-ass people. That's part of life, though, is somebody standing up saying, wait a minute, and then they begin to attack some institution. They'll attack religion, you know, which is easy to do. Not as easy as attacking a Dodge dealer or General Motors, but all right, religion is just all institutions are asking for it, not because the institution is basically faulty, not because it is a sham, not because it is some kind of conspiracy, not unless you're going to say all of life's conspiracy. And don't you say that. <laughs> uh, don't you say that. It's that there is no satisfactory conclusion. And life has little people, sort of small, non-terminally disruptive anomalies stand up, historians, philosophers, and people here and there. And they'll stand up and say, wait a minute. 
humanity keeps going or my part of the world keeps flowing along with this particular religion or this kind of cultural attitude and people just blindly accept, yes, the God say so and so or our holy book says so and so. And people just go along and they, they're living in a dream. It's a fog because that will not hold up. Hey, does life produce some boy geniuses or not? But all you hear about in life is the kind of people, they don't know what's going on. Those of you that didn't particular get a lot out of that car route that was toward the end of the night. Nothing wrong with the way it was read, but I admit it was kind of iffy. Even car route knew that. But it was, it was a guy that some people thought knew something, and one day he told him, he said, hey, you know, knew something special. He said, look, there are a lot of people in the world that know what's going on. Which, you know, it's supposed to kind of lead you up here listening and think, wait a minute, that's some kind of trick because he wouldn't say that. There's not a lot of people who know what's going on. There's a lot of people that know what's going on. But those that know what's going on and care don't know what's going on. Which is what we're talking about now. That life has, in the way in which it has to keep its own balance, it does raise up. Not great spiritual prophets, but smart asses. <laughs> they'll come up and they attack the spiritual and the intellectual prophets and the historians and the do-gooders because they point out in a way that's of no great consequence and it does not rock the boat enough at least to get the Hughes Corporation another recording contract no it was George McCray never mind scratch that off the table Any part of life's body can attack any other part, but it seems to be of no consequence unless the target is large enough to be institutional, to be widespread, a widely held belief of some kind. For somebody to rise up and say this, their attitude, their belief, what they're teaching, what they seem to represent, will not stand up. The most common being, as always, the attack on religion. As people have been standing up for... 5,000 years in the Western world attacking religion of all kinds, all kinds of the, the mystery religions, the mythologies of saying, wait a minute, this kind of stuff is just some kind of cheap drug to keep people from ever thinking, from staying on their own two feet because these kind of dreams about what's going to happen when you die or what you should be doing now and how goodness and trying to live according to our tenets or the tenets of these phony baloney priests will create so-and-so. Look around you, it doesn't create it. Look at them. Oh, Roberts wears glasses. There you are. The world's greatest faith healer. And they say, I rest my case. You know, they don't have to rest their case. They ain't going anywhere. So I can point that out. But notice, Oral, God knows he's on more stations than we are. The money keeps rolling in. The man wears glasses. That's a cheap shot. There is no such thing as a conclusive idea. That's it. But see, as long and the people who almost get there was a little, we could say, humor, which was supposed to, you know, try to jog you, jolt you into something else. And that kind of route is that yes, there are many people in the world that have always known what's going on, but those who know and care don't know what's going on. It's like they almost get to a point. This is no big deal, by the way. I'm not trying to overdo it because knowing the kind of people that get interested in this, probably 99 percent of you. Or some version of that kind of smart ass when you were a kid, or maybe last week, that you're still trying to point out the emperor doesn't have any clothes on. Big deal. You know. Where'd you get your glasses? <laughs> if you still got to do that, you understand, you're still defining it, and you don't understand it. But just to say, wait a minute, things are not reaching a satisfactory conclusion in the secondary world. You know, I may be getting enough to eat, and I may be getting laid periodically enough that I'm not you know, a danger to society and I've got a place to live. But in the secondary world, in the great civilized world, that is my primary interest. I don't know. I keep reading books and I keep meditating and I keep doing this, but I don't think anybody knows what they're talking about. And that, and some people, that becomes their truth. That becomes their conclusion. They become the kind that will stamp and say, wait a minute, I know what's going on in life. And maybe their brother-in-law or somebody will say, well, what? He'll say, I'm going to tell you what's going on in life. Nothing's going on in life because everybody's talking about you know, 
what life's about. They don't know what it's about. You can even round up a small probably religion or the beginning of religion or at least a bunch of people to hang around with <laughs> just on that basis. But notice, and it's not, don't look for Captain Irony. He, he didn't have to fly in here. Just look. The guy said, wait, I know what's going on. I'll tell you, I'm one of the few that know what's going on. And people say, yeah, what? He said, I'm going to tell you, all the people that say they know what's going on, just look around, just study history, just think about it. They do not know what's going on. Hmm. <laughs> now, you're not going to make me call in Captain Irony. Come on, you see that. Because it's not ironic. It's not sarcastic. It's not any cynical view. You're back to polarized energy in a three-dimensional context. And so even those that apparently have no consequence other than try to get you to look toward a crack, there are people that almost seem they don't. So I'm trying to trick you up to They almost seem that they're beginning to see something. That is, they go, wait a minute. None of this ever gets conclusive. Wait a minute. I'm tired of being fooled. I don't think anybody knows what's going on. That's just one version of it. And you think, or you could, if you were looking in a certain way, you could say, wait a minute. This guy may have some promise, except for this. Even if that was what's going on, if that was the name of the game, that there's nothing going on, this is all a big joke. If somebody says, wait a minute, I'm no longer fooled. My fasting, my drugs, it's finally paid off. Now I see the light. This whole th There's nothing going on. All right, let's say that's true. It's not. Well, let's say that's true. If you know what's going on, so I didn't put a period there what that guy was saying because it's always a comma. Do I have to do the rest? The guy wouldn't even say, wait a minute, I know what's going on, except for the rest of it. I have to tell you, he cares. It's not some flaw on his part. He's not some sissy. He's not psychologically weak. It's the nature of energy in the human brain. He would not have cause to define it. That is, to speak about it, unless he, quote, cared. Now, I'm using care in the largest sense. That is, he has. He has no other choice. The brain has no choice at that level. He has a prejudice. He has a preference. That he says, I have studied, fasted, meditated, and all that, and I've come to this conclusion without any doubt. Life is meaningless. Now, the guy would not have said that unless he has some feeling about that idea. You know that. He got no choice. He would not have said it. And it doesn't matter what he says. Ha! That's all right, which he wouldn't do. But he could say that or go, boy, life needs my help. Or wait till I tell the rest of the, wait till I tell the, rest of the world about this. How will I make them see this? As long as you've got to define it, you can understand it. They are mutually exclusive, not for rhetorical reasons, not for reasons of logic, not for reasons of anything beyond polarized energy, binary energy in a three-dimensional context. If you would further consider, uh, we have used the term operational definition several times, but you could, if you'll now push it a bit further, you could say that all definitions are operational only, but in a particular way. That is, they tell how a thing, including words, works. Not just technically, but just think right quick. The ordinary definitions, and I don't mean people looking in dictionaries or people making each other dis define each word. By defining, somebody says something, they speak about religion or the nature of life, the purpose of life, and then they define it. Not from a dictionary, but everything that the ordinary intellect defines is operational because it is telling how something works. From their view. We're not questioning their view. Their view is as good as anybody's. They're telling how it works. So it's only an operational definition. It does not tell why things might be possibly so arranged in the larger scheme of things. Such ordinary verbal Polar-based definitions, factual definitions, do not tell where as opposed to how. They do not tell where the thing, the idea, the 
area under question, under thought, under discussion, where the area is functionally connected to a more dimensional reality, where this 3D world in which they're talking about, where it connects, where it blends into more dimensions. So to tell how something works here, again, is quite proper. The technology is quite proper for ordinary life. There's nothing wrong. But all definitions are operational. And I'm not going to go into any great discussion between actual technical affairs and making machinery run. It does not render what I'm pointing out invalid. But we're speaking really about the factual secondary world of man. And any definition of anything, including words themselves, but all definitions having to do with the secondary world, the singular world of man, all of them are operational in that they can only point to, they can only speak about how things work. And I don't mean how things work in some deep philosophical sense. They only say how things work, such as, hey, if you'll take your hand off that hot plate, your hand will feel better. Or a person thinks, I bet that there may be some correlation between my excessive drinking on the weekend and my... Uh, in step, stuff like arrest for DUI every weekend. They're telling how, but they do not tell why. They certainly do not tell where the thing, the secondary thing, where it is arranged. So that then you might, if you want to look at it this way, then you might be able to get some glimpse of why it is where it is. Why it might be in the position where it is in a general greater scheme of how things could be arranged. To what possible end might life be arranged? Not how. Not simple. If I stop smoking, maybe I'll quit spitting up blood. If I quit beating up my wife, maybe my neighbors will quit calling the police on me. Maybe if I get a job, I'll get a paycheck. Oh, that's how. Maybe if I put gas in the car, it'll run. When you get into the secondary world, anything that, because it's all self-referring, and if you want to go back to that, there is no way out of that. It is self-referring in the same way that energy, polar-based energy, in a sense, is self-referring. It's either on-off, it's either hot or cold. One idea is dancing forward, and another one backwards. One is dominating, and one is submissive. On that basis, every definition, everything that the ordinary intellect thinks at that level is operational. It simply tells how. It makes the mind be able to motivate and get through 65 or 70 years here. But it never tells why something is that way. It can't. It doesn't tell where. It is operational. It is functionally operational, and that's it. To expect more of it, it's quite ordinary. Of course, you could say, thankfully, the more ordinary you are, the more you're accustomed to being somewhat disappointed. So, I don't guess this will come as any great shock to anyone. <gasps> there was another car route a few nights ago, completely unrelated. And that was as long as any of man's facts, any particular fact, but as long as any fact is only true at the expense of another fact, then there is no end to this. That is, if, if any particular fact is true only at the expense of some other fact being false, then there's no end to this. Uh, would you like to write quick, take a passing note, again, that this is tied to the fact that in a polarized version of 3D reality, that you can prove anything. Not simply prove what is true at any particular time, but you could prove what could be true if circumstances were different. Uh, it's never too late to be real slippery in the last 10 minutes, is it? Okay. I guess that was bad enough, so I guess we can make it worse. I mean, better by an example. 
still tied to, if you remember where we are, that if any particular fact, if any man's, any of man's facts are only true at the expense of a knowing being false, then there's no end to this. I'm trying to encourage you to find some nexus between that and the other one about you know, factualized version of 3D reality. You can prove anything. Mm -hmm. And you can not only prove, can prove anything, but you can prove that anything could be true. That doesn't help a lot. Here goes the example. Boy, this will, I mean, this will, this will clear, I'm sure I can just, I can see now. Millions of faces, well, four or five faces opening up and going, oh. All right, there continues to be this raging battle, this question. Uh, over the validity of, over the propriety of teaching. Uh, the idea is the theory of biological natural evolution as opposed to the new word, creationism. And they continue to fight this out as though, you know, either in our part of the world, the Judaic Christian idea that God went and created all, it's either that or it's those whole bunch of foreign Yankee carpet bagging intellectual <laughs> blister brains that believe in Darwinism and all that. All right, there would appear to be at any ordinary level, and I wasn't taking sides. I just picked on the latter group more. It's part of what comes from being, never mind. It would appear at the ordinary level, correctly so, it would appear that it's got to be in this particular context. It's got to be one or the other. No. Now, at the ordinary level, yeah, it's got to be one or the other. Well, it's certainly this. If it is one, it can't be the other. I mean, that's for sure. You got that, right? No, it's not true. One more time, back at the level at which it is asked, back at the level at which this is an important matter. If it wasn't this, I could put something else. Abortion, goodness, thievery, decency. But here's, I'm just trying to put some real flesh on it. Still a contemporary example. It would seem to be, without any doubt, that it's got to be one or the other. If that is the name of the game, if that is the name of the battle, that it's either we're going to teach and there is some validity, there's proof or there's more proof, that it's either that there is some kind of natural, you know, from the Big Bang onwards and there's some kind of natural selection, blah, blah, blah. It's either that or, according to this other group, it is a metaphysical. It is that a God went pow and he just created it all and you know, the rest of it is just details. He, he did it and there's nowhere else to look, some supreme being. On that basis, it would have to be one or the other, and whichever one it is, excludes the other. That is, if one of those facts, one of those theories are true, it is at the expense of the other one being false. But no, if you can see right quick, and not to play with words, but if you only listen with real, real soft ears, I don't know what else you make out of it, and think of some kind of pseudo cornflakes attempt at philosophy. It's not playing with words, so listen. It sounds as though it would have to be one if it's going to be true. One can only be true at the expense of the other, and there's no way out, but that is not so. It could be either one, right? Let's say it is. Let's say that you, don't, that you just heard about it, and you don't have... It could be either one. Either one can be proven. Now, wait a minute. See, now, if you're already wired up that as far as you know one of them's true, then it can't be. Well, I was trying to kind of trick you. Either one of those can be proven. I'm not going to stop and do it, but if I could get you, as they call it, I think in Hollywood and the halls of Congress, if I could get you to suspend belief for a second. <laughs> Is it the halls of Congress or the halls of religions? I can't remember. If you had no particular feeling either way, I mean none, then some of you got to feel this. It could be proven. And if I say I could prove it, I don't mean I had any particular ability. It could simply be proven to you either way. And those of you will assume that all of you were even accidentally well-read enough or well-TV'd enough that you do know there has been a controversy 
in our great country, in our part of the world, for many, many years over evolution versus Christianity, or the Judaic idea of creation. So we'll assume you know that. And we'll assume whether you now, at the best spark of your little brain right now, that you say, ah, that stuff, I don't even think about it. If I still said, right, back at your old good building site, back where you were Grunhilde or Siegfried, when you were a little tyke and before you got involved with this, before you could think a little bit, I bet you had some preference. And if by now if you're that good, you say, yeah. You know, don't bore me with all that spurious talk. Well, my family were strict Baptists, and so, of course, we believed in creation, and they taught me that. Nah, forget why. You simply realize that in your nervous system, we'll assume that all of you already have an opinion. As far as your old building site, let's assume that all of you have one opinion about that. As far as your old thinking was concerned, one of those are true. Follow me. I still hadn't changed from the second possibility. Now, if you can think at all beyond that limit, this is when it's good. This is when they're, forget the questions about the difference between entertainment and serious instruction. Even you having an opinion, your old self, that yes, it had to be, don't excuse it, but yes, it had to be divine creation. But now you should be good enough without any particular feeling, without caring that you, to yourself, not me, not through some trigger, but even you realize that you could prove to yourself just as likely and it'd feel just as good that you could now prove yourself the opposite. Of no consequence, I'm not saying to talk yourself out of such a place of, boy, I'm finally relieved of my subconscious Baptist upbringing. You either hear this or you don't. That you realize that although one of them at the ordinary level is true with you, with your old thinking, one more time, forget how you got it. Don't say, well, my family beat me and made me holler, God made us all. Screw all that. If it's there, it's there. As far as your nervous system responds, that one of those, yes, is true. I can't help it. I've just made to believe that. All right. But by now, all you've got to do is be able to think just a little bit beyond that. Just sidestep it. And you've got to be able to see. Not tell anybody. Not define it. You can't prove it. There is nothing to prove. But you realize the other could be proven. I could do it. That is you to yourself. Either one is true. It just so happens that in your case, one of them was true. But either one could be true. Either one can be proven. And as, as necessary for the continuing growth and activity and the breath of life, anything, any idea, anything going on in the secondary world that has a continuing necessity to it has two opinions, such as the struggle between acceptable, civilized, legal abortions or not, or should we be teaching our children, should we believe that God created this, some supreme being, or it's just some kind of natural accident and it just keeps growing. No matter which is believed by norm over here, by man A, by group A, no matter which is believed, there's going to be a group B believing the apparent opposite. And the real slick trick, the real enjoyment, the way you're beginning to think, is don't say, don't let your old intellect say, well, sure that's obvious because in any important question in the history of man, <laughs> there are always a group of people who have an erroneous idea. And that's just the way life is. We're trying to do better. We're trying to straighten up these poor misled sheep. So you missed it already if you do that. It should be a slight hint somewhere. But everybody else is wired up. Everybody's supposed to be wired up. If you say, wait a minute, there are two sides to every question. Then almost anybody in the city, almost anybody on this planet would go, well, sure. So what? I'm giving it, what are you talking about? And if I said, well, abortion, sexual, mores, uh, what we should teach our kids about where the universe, where creation came from. They go, oh, yeah, you're right. I got you now. You're saying there are two versions or two ways of looking at all these great important questions. Well, yeah, there's you know the correct way and the incorrect way. Yeah. But it's not even worth talking about the latter. You're talking about people that you know, they're holding back civilization. You're talking about people who are dumb. You're talking about people. You can call them anything you want to. What you're calling is as far as you're wired up, the ideas are sub being submitted to, submissive to yours. 
The people may not be. They may be out there at the barricades trying to climb over and make you take their idea. But that's another story. Because might doesn't make right. They may come over here and kill me. They're not going to kill us, are they? They may come over here and threaten to kill me, but I know I'm right. And if they do torture me and make me admit I'm not, I'm sure God will understand. <laughs> no one can see, back to where we started, that there is something. Letters to the editor should give you a hint, because all letters to the editor <laughs> have a view. And it gives you no hint that it doesn't matter what the view is. There's something behind all of this. Because I could take another direction. The ordinary intellect still believes, for instance, in newspapers, that the purpose is to impart news when it's not. <laughs> it's to sell advertising. You get the news so that you'll take the advertising. This is directly connected to what I'm talking about in another way, but pretty tortuous to try and deal with in 30 seconds. <laughs> It doesn't matter what the subject is. It doesn't matter what the idea is. And far beyond any question of morality and blah, 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 blah. It's not a question to someone who can think in a different way, who's trying to. It's not a matter that any idea is true or false, right or wrong, Christian or unchristian, Jewish or unchristian, Muslim or non-Muslim, American or un-American, Italian or... Un it's not any of that. It's that any idea... That if somebody's talking about it, if more than one person's talking about it, life needs it in some way. And so the idea has got to breathe. And for the idea to breathe, it has its opposite. You don't have to look for it. It has its opposite. And one of the ideas must dominate or not even one person could think of the idea. And that's all it is. It's not true or false. Is one of them are dominating. One of the ideas is dominating at the expense of another one. And as long as that goes on, thank God, I guess we'll have to pick this up next time, but as long as that goes on, there is no end to this. And I was going to conclude by saying, thank God. <laughs> well, think about it. Norm, hand me a dust mask. Fade the salt to dust, I mean the black. 